Hello, I'm Mitch Waite, and I'm the founder of MogianMonster.com. Uh, as for an introduction, uh, very many people follow my efforts on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and so forth, and they're very hungry for answers about Bigfoot. Well, I study the Mogion Monster, which is Arizona's Bigfoot. Um, Mogion, the Mogion Monster is uh, a local name given by the Boy Scouts of Camp Geronimo. And uh, it's like the skunk ape of Florida or the uh, grassman of Ohio or the Sasquatch or Yeti, Yowie, Yarin, that kind of thing. So when I speak of the Mogion Monster, I'm just speaking of the local entity of Arizona. <clears throat> I have conducted studies throughout the United States with various other uh, Bigfoot researchers and hunters and I decided to concentrate my efforts here in Arizona because it has unique opportunities and part of it has to do with uh, the available area for Bigfoot to live in. Um, and Arizona is my home. I know it very well. I hunted and fished it and hiked it for years and years and years, and you can tell, years and years. <laughs> I am a retired Air Force major. I know all about escape and evade tactics and so forth, so I can anticipate a lot of movements that most people don't. Um, And going back to the habitat of Arizona, uh, there are basically four, four criteria that I use when I'm searching for uh, Bigfoot. And one is there has to be plenty of good clean water, not cow pond scum water or anything like that, but the good clean creek water or something like that. They have to eat lots of food and they're omnivorous. So they have to eat lots of meat and lots of plant life. So it needs, they need a lot of it. They also need uh, foliage to hide in. They are cryptid in nature, and cryptid means that they hide. So, you know, they need something to hide in. And they need the lack of man. Now, a lot of people claim that they see Bigfoot in their backyard and so forth. Uh, this may be transitory. I don't know. Uh, generally speaking, the Bigfoot in Arizona are mostly in the very remote areas that man usually doesn't visit very often. However, they do follow the food, they do migrate from time to time, they might even be in search for mates, and therefore uh, people might see them around their houses for short periods of time. <clears throat> Arizona is very active in uh, sightings and vocalizations. Um, if you don't believe me, just uh, watch season three, episode five of Finding Bigfoot, which I am in. But in the town meeting, they uh, ask, okay, how many people have had uh, an experience with Bigfoot? How many people have seen one? And almost everybody in there raised their hands. There was about 200 people in there. Uh, so that is like the most that they have ever had in a town meeting. I mean, these are first-hand encounters. These are not somebody that they know had an encounter or something like that. This is an encounter they had. <clears throat> so Arizona is a very rich place to study Bigfoot. It provides unique opportunities. Uh, I would like to state that the information in these videos that I'm going to do in the questions and answers uh, session are my own opinions and observations. You may agree with them, you may not. You're welcome to your own opinion. Uh, however, if you contact me, no profanity, no swearing, it must be kept professional. No demeaning, degrading, or belittling language. And that is a standard that I have tried to keep the whole time that I've been in this business. Uh, I'm not out to prove Bigfoot's existence. 
sorry, you know, it's really been proved already, but uh, I'm not going to play that game of, of trying to get into arguments as to whether they exist or not. I personally know they exist. I've seen them. I've seen them numerous times. I have photographed them. I have videoed them. So I know they're there. Uh, you might think I'm a crazy old coot, but that's the way it is. It's kind of like Columbus in the Columbus days when everybody thought the world was flat. A few people said, no, it's round. And a lot of people were persecuted for that theory or that thought. In fact, a lot of people were put to death over that thought. Um, and, it, and it took hundreds of years for them to finally realize that the earth was not flat, but it was round. Well, this is kind of like what Bigfoot existence is up against. It's there. Uh, there are a few people out there espousing the truth and stuff. But uh, it, it's going to take time for people to change their minds. It's going to take time for them to admit the truth. I hope it's not a hundred years. I hope it's sooner than that. <clears throat> I am a no-kill, no-harm person. And I will not sacrifice the well-being or the life of a Bigfoot for the curiosity of man. I have uh, been very close to them before. Uh, people have just gotten totally upset at me that I did not kill it, capture it, or whatever. Um, and that's the way it is. Uh, I am here to study them. I am here to figure out what why Bigfoot does what Bigfoot does and I'm trying to learn about them um, I am a Bigfoot researcher and not a Bigfoot hunter Bigfoot hunters have a tendency to be out there for the proof uh, and some of them are motivated by money fame glory and stuff like that I'm not I'm here to learn so that's why I try to video everything. Uh, so many of my viewers and friends want to know what I know about Bigfoot. And so I'm being asked basically the same questions over and over and over again. So what I'm going to try to do here is uh, answer some questions and, from my opinion and my point of view. And if you agree with them, fine. If you don't, fine. But uh, at least they'll be on record. Um, I will. I asked the viewers or my friends on Facebook uh, to submit me some questions each week, and I would try to uh, give the uh, the answer to them the best that I can. Now, in some cases, I might not know. I mean, what we know about Bigfoot is very little. Um, I've been in the field quite often. I'm out there all the time. And it's taken a lot of time just to glean some of the tidbits that, that I have been able to witness and encounter. And that's kind of why I video everything. Um, again, these are my own thoughts, my own opinions, and my theories. You're welcome to your own. Uh, the first question comes up is from Anthony. Anthony says, What are your thoughts on the Virginia pictures of this past weekend? Well, I get a lot of this. Uh, a lot of people ask me to review and comment on other people's work. And I really don't like to do that. Um, for instance, you make a comment or an observation and it's incorrect, and then it comes back and bites you. Uh, so I really don't like to do that. But I will give some helpful hints if you really want to know whether it's not something is uh, good. Uh, time will tell. Generally speaking, if it's a one-time shot and uh, you know so forth, it could be, and it might not be. Take it for what it's worth. Go out there, find your own observations, see what you can see. Um, I normally do not like to peruse videos of other people's work. 
uh, and this is because I'm really busy with my own stuff. I really don't have much time to actually spend on YouTube or on the other videos or stuff like that or read books or anything. I'm usually in the field and I'm usually doing something. So, you know, when you ask me if I've seen this, chances are I haven't because I just don't do that. Um, and one reason why I do that is because I really don't want to flavor my work or my ideas with other people's thoughts. I want to keep my my thoughts and my theories mine. Now from time to time I have gone out and looked at other people's stuff and uh, you know like I said I really don't like to comment on other people's work. Uh, most of the time if it's a hoax it's very obvious so you know watch it make up your own opinion and uh, then go out and do your homework. You'll figure it out. Um, I always like to give people the benefit of a doubt. If somebody shows me a picture or something like that, I'm willing to believe them uh, up front. Um, you know, unless it's totally obvious that it's incorrect. But I don't want to kick back and say, you're a liar or, you know, you're wrong or something like that. That's not my nature. Um, you know, it's time will tell whether or not their stuff is true or correct. Um, I can only make judgments from what I have seen and what I've experienced. So, you know, if you, if you have a video of a Bigfoot running through carrying a baby or something like that, well, I really haven't seen that, so, you know, I can't make a judgment call on it. Um, I don't know the circumstances of the events, and that's the problem of many people watch a video and make a judgment. But they weren't there. They didn't know what the circumstances were, or, you know, it's just, if it's not on video, it doesn't exist. But, um... Passing judgment on something, if you're wrong, can come back and bite you real hard. So, I try not to do that. Uh, as far as the Virginia pictures go, I see no reason to doubt it. Um, so, I'm not really going to dwell on it. Um, however, it's a little bit hairy for what I've seen. Could be regional differences. You know, I'm in Arizona, this is Virginia. Totally different. Uh, there are regional differences in the Bigfoot. Uh, 